favourite market store quite. Um, shop early for Christmas. Pound the ball. Have and have a look. Bananas, bananas, fresh bananas. Two days after Christmas, and I'll shout out, fresh fish, come and get your fish. Only 363 shopping days left till Christmas. Come, come and have a look, come and have a look. Come and have a look, come and have a look. Two for a pound. Ah, the harder you bowl, the bigger they grow. Suitable toys for girls and boys. Do you know what I'm selling? Balloons. I, I was forced to do it when I was younger and I, I really don't like it. Since I've taken over, it's, uh, it's been banned. A lot of our Brixton was, was lots of field growing things. There was lots of what they call market gardens in the area. Brixton Market started in about 1870. We've got one family in the market that sell, fruit, that sell fruits and they've basically been in the market since it began. My great great granddad was the founder trader of Brixton. My grandfather started the market in Pope's Road and everybody else followed him and that's hundred and odd years ago. And uh, over the years the market expanded as there were more people in the area, more people came to live in Brixton and because it was quite easy to get into Brixton on the train. And my dad actually got this pitch here on the corner in December 1948 when I was born. This is, this is the newest part of the market, is Electric Avenue. And this is one of the first roads in England to get electric light, electric lane and electric avenue. In the 1950s, after the Second World War, when there was uh, a lot of people who were looking for work to do, um, they, they used to go and, and, um, and work on Electric Avenue, where they weren't really supposed to work, but they used to go down there and sell fruit and veg and things like that. They have it on the barrel, so obviously they should put their apples, oranges and that. It was back then in the day, it was like fly pitching. So the police would come along and then they used to have their mum with their barrels. And that, they get caught, and obviously they'll get confiscated, but he's quite lucky we'll just get away with it. And then to actually go and get the fruit and veg, they'd have to take that barrow all the way over to Covent Garden, roll it over over there, and then come back. About 1952, Lambeth Council decided that, uh, that the market should expand onto, onto Electric Avenue. And, uh, and that's basically how the market's been ever since then. So the cover markets, they were seen as somewhere for um, traders that were working out on the street market, the traders there could go and get a small shop in the indoor market for not as much money as it would be to get a shop on the high street. We used to sell free lettuces for two pence and cucumbers for a penny each. I and mean, I used to have to shout out, but I was only quite a young girl then. 50, 60 years ago, there was mostly people selling what we call traditional fruit and veg, which is like potatoes, apples, carrots, onions, and that sort of thing. Whereas now it's changed a lot because there's so many people come from all over the world and they want to buy yams and plantains and cassava. My early memory of Brixton Market is feel like I'm home, close to home. When I'm walking in Brixton Market, it's like I'm home. Coming to the market with my mum, and she stopped every five minutes, talking to people so you spent literally the whole day just shopping and being fed up because you want to get home. My earliest memory was coming here with my mother to carry heavy bags doing shopping. I'm along Electric Avenue they used to have a glass roof so when it was rain you didn't get wet. Over there where all these shops are that's where Tesco's used to be. And um, my mum left me outside there when I was about four. She told me to wait and she went inside to do shopping because it was crowded. And um, I waited for what I thought was a really, really long time and she must have come out and missed me, so I wandered off and got lost. It would be 1981 and it would be the time just around the time of the riots, the famous riots in Brixton, when this was 
this whole area had a different feeling. It was much more tense. Well, when I first used to come, I used to be very scared to come here, actually. And now I'm getting used to the area and to the people around. So it's, uh, I feel much safer now than before. Um, my earliest memory of Brixton Market was it seemed very colourful. Very colourful, a little chaotic. About 20 years ago, it was a bit notorious. You had somewhere called the front line. The shop I've got now started trading in 1953. I actually started in 1987. And I was railroaded into it. My father was a trader and my father was short-staffed and he needed someone he could trust, so he got me. So much to do. Work, work. I never hated work. I loved it. I used to play music in, in groups and so it was very difficult to keep a, a proper job, like going to, going to an office nine to five or something like that. So being a market trader was a bit more flexible so that I could pick my times when I wanted to work. Yeah, I come here for one week when I was 17. That's like 27 years ago. <laughs> still embarrassing when the people come past you silly, all right, let's know why. <laughs> I became ill. I got a, something called celiac disease, and that means I can't eat wheat, rye or barley. So I started making my own food to eat uh, at home and then realised it was really very nice and so I started selling it so other people like me could enjoy my food. I think it's more rewarding when you see that the hard work that you put into uh, trading actually goes uh, to your business, it's going to improve uh, your organisation rather than someone else's. I'm back home in Jamaica because um, I grew up as a farmer, my parents are a farmer and we should take our product to the market and, and sell. Uh, my father is, uh, is a trader and since I was uh, six years old I was helping him um, and that uh, was my dream. It was always wanted to be a trader. I came here when I was eight years old as a Saturday boy and I've been here ever since. We've had some good fun over the years. Thirteen of us went skiing one year, thirteen traders. All went skiing and took Austria by storm, that was good. I was 17 when I started, so I started back when this market was really, really, you know, good people used to go around the pub after work, you know, used to like get together with the police and the firemen, all the things, we used to have our big Christmas dudes, you don't know, get nothing like that now. Our men who used to pull the stalls, push them to put them away. He worked since he was 14 and he died at age 104. And he worked all the, all the way till he was 100 years old. And his name was Bastard, God bless him, he died this year at the age of 104. I was quite young and the war was on. And the bombs, the aeroplanes used to come over and I used to duck under the stall for safety. That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> and I was quite young then and it wasn't very nice. And it's a little record shop there, and it's played music loud, and this guy, every day, he used to come, and he used to just wear one pair of shorts, that's all he wore, and he would dance around in circles all day, every single sunny day. But there are lots of wonderful characters, like the man saying reggae, reggae, and all these wonderful things, so um, Brixton Market is a place full of wonderful, crazy characters. I was still exotic dancing, Latin American dancing. I was only getting two pounds tension in the night. When I started. Say see ball, love us say that in France. When we thrill to romance, it means that it's so good. Say see ball, so I say it to you, like the French people do, because it's all so good. Every word, every sign, every kiss dear. Leads to only one thought, and it's this dear, it's so good. Nothing else can replace, just your slightest embrace. I can't do it now, Mike, no more, because <laughs> it's the weather. I'll go high no, pitch. The old trailers, there's only about five or six of us left. We're a dime, we're a dying breed. A big change in Brixton Market. Uh, from the traditional traders of meat, vegetables, fish, it's now got um, a lot more uh, variety to it, so there's a lot more interest in the market now. Every other stall was fruit or veg or salad or, or flowers. 
now, well now we have, you name it, we sell it here now. There's no more second-hand market in Brixton, which is a real shame. I initially started on the second-hand market. Start doing my business in cinnamon market and they used to sell all this. People who can't afford like new clothes or new radio or new alarm or anything like that, they could come to the second hand uh, uh, street, which was that one, Station Road, and they buy it from there. And it was like a, such a good community as well. They used to sell sheep's heads, just their heads. Like some places you can still buy pig's heads, but they used to have sheep's heads just hanging up on hooks and um, rabbits and pigeons hanging up on hooks at the butchers. There was more, to me, there was more of a community spirit because, um, as I said, my mum, when she was doing her shopping and I was a child, there was a lot more people that she knew, so you got to know a lot more people that way. And I still see one or two faces now, whereas I suppose now it's people just coming into the market, buying what they want and getting out. So the community spirit doesn't appear to be there. Um, over the years the market has got a little bit smaller and it's not as busy as what it used to be, which is a shame. Um, a lot less food and fruit and veg and then a lot more things like mobile phones and toys and clothes and things like that. There's a lot more hair shops. They sell a variety of foods here, so you can get Polish food, Indian food, Jamaican food. It's totally changed. Predominantly when I was a child, it was more um, Caribbean, but the cultures have changed over the years. A lot of the people that come to live in Brixton from other countries are quite used to going to the market back home. It's quite natural for them to come down to the market and, uh, and do their shopping, so it's been quite good for us really. They've only just started to change in the last 18 months, whereas we're getting more, more and more restaurants and, and, and uh, coffee bars, etc, etc and it seems to be aimed at the high end of the market now that the, the, the people with more leisure time and more money to spend rather than the shoppers that, was, that it was aimed at years ago. I mean the, the market is protected now, it used to not be protected, now a lot of the buildings are listed uh, which makes it harder for I suppose developers to come in and say we're just going to demolish everything and build something completely new. The biggest disaster is when the the multi-storey car park is there, that's gone, it's been demolished. The lack of use of cars has killed the market. I made my money because they're selling in bulk and people can't come and buy in bulk because they, they, have, they, can't, get, they can't get it away because they, they now have to travel here on public transport or tube or, or, or cabs because the, the car park has been demolished to make way for a, an ice skating rink. When people come and park, they, 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 they get a ticket. You can buy one party and get a, a ticket for 60 pounds, so it doesn't work it. Uh, supermarkets are a blight on our society. We understand that it's good to go and, and it, it can be good to go to one place, do your shopping, park outside and life's very convenient, but you get homogenized uh, living. You don't get individual <laughs> traders you don't get individual products, it's all mass markets. So we really specialise on, um, on something and you've got a lot of, lot of traders in the market who really, really know the things that they sell and they've built up their customers and so the, their customers are actually coming to them for, for a specific reason. Supermarkets can't compete with me. The, the, the sheer volume and range of fish that I deal with, that I do, I do supermarkets can't compete. Now it's very tough. You name it, you can go and get fruit, veg, you can buy your shoes, you can go and buy your bed, you can get your, your prescriptions. You name it, they sell it, plus they have parking facilities. Well, I hardly come down here because you shop online now, so I'll go to Tesco's or Sainsbury's. I can get all of my meat, fish and vegetables here cheaper than the supermarket. Generally, the fruit's ready to eat, um, it's cheaper, it's fresher, there's much more of a sort of social life in the market where the supermarket has none of that. Um, I try and buy more interesting fruit and vegetables here than I might if I went to a supermarket and you always get twice as many and you don't get lots of packaging which I like. My shopping habits have changed because I've got less money but there's more things I wish I could afford. <laughs> we have the fruits, we have the watches, we have the mobile phones, we have the clothes, we have the t-shirts, we have you know. I love the reggae music. When you're walking in Brixton you can bounce about you know and shop carefree and just be happy.
It's old, it's got character from a long, long time. The essence of what the market is, I think it's pretty much the same. And that's very, very positive, because markets are, dis are disappearing all over the place. I think the market's absolutely fantastic. It's really exciting, really vibrant, really lively. I like the atmosphere a lot. I live on the other side of London and I travel a long way to come to it. Quite at five in the morning. It's not easy to go market. And then you've got to come back and load set up. Okay. You've then got to stand here and serve up all day long to at least six, six half six. You've no breaks or anything, so it's a hell of a long day. That's life. I mean, I can't complain. It's a job. It's kept me at work for this long, so quite a job. I've worked hard, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I hope the market will still be there in 20 years' time. It's very difficult to say. In 20 years' time, I think it'll be gone. I think we'll be history.